All right, back on the Young Turks. Now we're talking about a book that uh, is uh, really interesting and, and a little different. It's called Searching for Watopia or Whiteopia, an improbable uh, to the heart of white America. That seems to be missing a word. So <laughs> I've been having trouble with my press releases lately. Anyway, uh, Rich Benjamin's the author. He uh, was um, a visiting scholar at Columbia University School of Law, where I attended uh, back in the day, and uh, he got. Uh, uh, professional support for Brown University and National Endowment for the Humanities for this project. It's a fascinating project that he went on. So, Rich, welcome to the Young Turks. Hi, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, so, t- tell us about this project, first of all, and, and what you did and how it led to the book. Well, what I did is between 2007 and 2009, I embarked a 27,000 mile journey the fastest growing whitest communities in America and I wanted to see what those communities say about us as a country and one of uh, a surprising statistic is that by 2042 white people will no longer be the majority in America and so that's the backstory to my journey okay now how did you find the whitest communities what did that mean and and how did you go about finding them I went about finding them through census data. I looked at communities that are already white and then that have experienced growth since 2000, and the majority of that growth coming from other white migrants. And so what were you, did you have any expectations? What were you expecting when you got to these communities? I didn't have a running hypothesis. What I would find, I just went open-ended, and I lived in three of them for three to four months of peace, and one was St. George, Utah, the second was Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and the third was Forsyth County, Georgia, and they're very different communities, and I had a very different experience in each of them. So uh, tell me about it. Uh, what happened? Because, look, uh, I- I'm literally curious about it. So, you know, and okay, as I was reading, it. as I was reading, you know, the, the blurb on your book, honestly, uh, I didn't know that you were African American. And so I thought you were, like, going undercover. Uh, but no, uh, when they see you, they realize you're not white. So uh, what was the reaction? Exactly. I am black, as your uh, radio listeners may not go. You know, some people reacted with hospitality. Some people reacted with, you know, a steady nonchalance, you know, trying to not make a big deal, and then other people acted with visible dread, and they say to our face, oh my goodness, I can't believe you're studying our communities. A, because if you write about us, more people will come, and B, we just want to be left alone. What's the big deal with segregation? Okay, now, are these communities actively segregated? I mean, do they do they not want African Americans there, or are they just kind of de facto segregated? Well, it's de facto segregation, and many folks live in these communities and move to these communities without giving segregation a second thought. In other words, they're just moving uh, to get more home for their dollar or to be near beautiful lakes, rivers, and mountains to hunt and to fish. And then, I'm sorry, yes? Right, that makes sense. So what I'm most curious about, I guess, is how many of the people that were there are in that category, hey, they just wanted a cheap land and a beautiful place in Idaho, and how many of them uh, went there to get away from minorities? Well, some people told that to my face. For example, in St. George, Utah, you have a lot of people who frankly say, we grew up in Southern California, and Southern California now isn't the Southern California of our childhood. So they're not really fleeing black people, per se. They're fleeing immigrants. And I was fascinated because I attended a a Minutemen meeting in uh, Utah. Minutemen, of course, is a group that patrols uh, the border and vigilante justice. And uh, folks would say, hey, we got here from Tucson. We got here from Phoenix. We got here from L.A. And if you want St. George, Utah, to look like these towns, then you better do something about immigration. What, What do they want done about immigration, Rich? Uh, many people, they want our border with Mexico sealed, and then people had formed a group in this community, and what they'll do is they'll bang on local businesses' doors, and then they'll say, are your workers legal? And mm-hmm. so they want immigration laws enforced. 
You know, that's interesting, So, because that gets to the issue of whether there's harm here. We're t and we're talking to Rich Benjamin. He wrote the book uh, Whitopia, Searching for Whitopia, An Improbable Journey to the Heart of White America. Uh, if they're hanging out by themselves um, and they're recollecting their childhood of all whites and uh, they're fishing in their lakes, I'm not sure I see a big problem with it. You know, it's not my cup of tea, but it's a big country, right? Uh, but is there a harm here uh, from some of their attitudes? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're going to come upon a country in 2042 where white people are no longer the majority, and we're going to have many ethnic groups as super minorities, you could call it. And our democracy will not function at its optimum unless everyone is integrated as full and equal members. And so these segregation patterns, they may appear to alleviate social tensions in the short term, but in the long term, they do more harm than good. And do they, do these groups at all slip into, do any of them, now I imagine not all of them for sure, but do any of them slip over into like Aryan Nation, etc.? Well, <laughs> what happened is I stumbled upon um, a Christian identity church, and that is the religious wing of Aryan Nation, and that was in North Idaho in a fairly rural community called Sandpoint. And not, obviously, Aryan Nation isn't in all of these communities, but there are pockets of it in North Idaho, and I visited it. And what happened when you visited Aryan Nation? Well, I think a lot of people were a bit surprised and a bit wary. I was surprised and wary. And uh, they were having a three-day retreat, and I went to the three-day retreat. There were sermons, there were political lectures, you know, there was schmoozing on the porch, and... Some interesting things happen. For example, uh, I would overhear people say, oh, yeah, I'm no longer working for David Duke. Where are you working? And then um, another conversation I was sitting in on, uh, two white separatists were complaining that educated Anglo-Saxons aren't having enough kids, and they were complaining that Anglo-Saxon hardworking Americans were being sent to Iraq and Afghanistan as cannon fodder. So it was a lot of race-related and non-race-related conversations from a very conservative pocket in this country. Well, that's an interesting twist on Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, because, I mean, they signed up, and it's not like we voted for the war. <laughs> they voted for the war. It, you know, and I'm generalizing a little bit, but I'm curious about the retreat. That's kind of cute. Did they have any s'mores? Did they, I mean, is there like a like a, a family component to this? Is it like fun and cute in other ways? But you know, when they get into the conversations, they're like, oh yeah, I mean, minorities, black people and Latinos, they're the worst. Well, yes, there is a family component. In other words, kids were tossing a football, kids were playing chess on the porch, people were hadn't seen each other in uh, two years when they had had their last gathering. And I should add, I'm the only uh, non-Aryan journalist to ever have done this at this retreat. Were you were you uh, frightened a little bit at all or no? Um, no, I was not. I took proper precautions, but I you oh, know you everyone's apprehensive. Pardon me. Were you packing? No, I wasn't packing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I'll tell you this though. I learned to shoot a gun in Idaho, not for that reason, but uh, I was not packing. I never carry concealed weapons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, oof. One quick question. Did you find communities that were kind of idyllic, that did not have a racial component, they happened to be white, yes, they fleed from that a little bit of the immigration, et cetera, et cetera, but they weren't focused on race and they just live in their own lives? Yes, there's, there's an element to that. I think a lot of people just want, like you said, the neighborliness, the idyllic surrounding, and the beautiful setting, and then after the fact, they may or may not realize how white it is. Some people do, and some people don't. Some people say, we don't care, nor do we notice the racial composition of our neighborhood, and other people say we prefer it that way. So uh, it's a difference. All right. An interesting book, no question about it. Rich Benjamin, author of Searching for Whitopia. Thanks so much for joining us on The Young Turks. Thank you. It's great to be here.